Good morning, long time no see, and I'm come back with a new video about YubiKey. And in this video, we will talk about new privacy guard and pretty good privacy functionalities of your Yubico key. You have various ways to interact with your card and the GPG common line utilities is probably uh, the most common and you can install using Winget. So you can Winget search for GPG and you will find every package you find in Winget that support GPG and you have GPG for Win. And this is the package you are going to install. So you can do Winget, install GPG for Win and you are ready to go to use your GPG functionality in Windows. GPG card edit command is the most common command that allows you to edit functionalities on your card. Okay, when the GPG card command start, you will find immediately presented with a list of information about your card. You can type help for a list of command, but uh, do not forget if you issue the admin command, you will enable administration command. And so now if I type help again, I can see all the commands that are available in my YubiKey. And you have a really lot of command you can perform to your card thanks to the GPG command line utility. If you prefer a uh, graphic utilities, you can open Cleopatra. It comes with your um, GPG installation. With the GPG for Win, it comes also the Cleopatra. You have the smart card section and the smart card is used because the GPG utilities see your YubiKey as a smart card. It is a physical hardware capable of doing operation. And so you have a smart card management section where you can issue a lot of commands. And as usual, first thing you need to do is change administration pin and change the pin. These two pins are those one used to uh, protect your card. If your card gets stolen or if you lost the card, the pin makes sure that no one is capable of using cryptographic functions of the key without knowing the pin. And as usual, the pin has a maximum number of tentatives after you failed this maximum number of attempts, all the key inside your YubiKey were not accessible anymore. So if you lost the key, an attacker have usually three tentative for guessing the pin to use your GPG functionality. If they fail for three times, the key becomes unusable. The administration pin is the pin you use for managing the keys. It comes pre-configure with the digit from one to eight. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight digit long and you should change. So it asks for your pin. And then you need to enter the new pin. And you are asked to enter the pin a new time and you've changed the administration pin. You need to do the very same for the user pin. The user pin is the pin you said for, not for administration purpose, but for signing document for using the key. And it comes uh, pre-configured with the number from one to six. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm changing into another value. I can confirm the value and I've changed it also the user pin. So uh, these two operations are the first one you need to do if you want to use GPG functionalities on your key. Now let's examine a little bit the GPG card edit command. I'm issuing the card, I'm issuing admin and with the command list, you can always list all the information on your key. As you can see, there's the key attributes and this is the default attributes of the key used by your YubiKey. So you use RSA 2048 keys and um, this is not probably the best option as the minimum you should use RSA 4096 size key or you can use elliptic curve cryptography. So you can change it and you can change, remember you need to do admin and 
using admin, it tells you that the commands are allowed and the commands are not allowed. So this is in Italian. And so uh, each time you type admin, you toggle the ability to use admin command. So when you enable admin command, you can change this default to a much more uh, secure option. Command to change this value is the k at command. And so it is asking me for uh, some option. The first option is uh, which kind of algorithm you want to use for signing. Sorry for this installation in Italian. I don't know why it comes in Italian, even if I chose the English. Um, but the first option is the signing key. So I want to use ECC and I want to use the 25519. This is the predefined curve for uh, ECC and usually is the best option. And okay, now the key will ask you for the admin pin because you're changing option of the key. Now you have the option for cryptography key and I want to use ECC even for this key. And okay, admin pin again and you're going again and then you need to choose the last option, the authentication key. Still I want to use ECC, still I want to use 25519 and it asks me, for a pin the third time and I'm okay. Now if I'm type um, list, sorry, you can see that the key attributes are now changed and now the default key attributes are elliptic curve and ED25519. That is probably the best op option. The only uh, problem in using this kind of cryptography is that is much more recent than RSA. So it could be that you have some compatibility program, but actually I use this as the default without any problem. If you want to use RSA, you can do the key at command again and change the value to RSA 4096. Now, if you want to generate a key, you have the command generate. So you can type generate. And the first thing that it is asking you is if, if, if you want to execute a backup of cryptography key. But remember, the command generate will generate the key inside the YubiKey. And even if you backup the, the, the key, this backup, it's called a shame backup. It's not the real backup. It represents something that can identify that key, but it cannot be used to restore the key to a different physical key. So remember, you can and you should perform the backup of your private key, but this is only a shim backup and works only if you have the physical YubiKey where the key is generated. Now I will press yes, I want to backup the, the key and then it, it asks me for the pin and it is telling me that the pin, the default pin is one, two, three, four, five, six and the admin pin is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And since it is the first time it is asking the pin, the command line does not know that I already changed the pin and it is suggesting me the value, but uh, I don't have a problem. I have my new pin and I'm going to back up my key. Okay, now I need to choose the expiring on the key and I can say, the key will, will be valid for uh, a certain number of years. Now, I like for the key not to be, not, not to expire. This will be valid forever. And it will ask me for confirmation. The key will not expire. This is correct. This is your personal uh, option. You can generate the key and it, you, you can make the key valid for, I don't know, a couple of years. And then after a couple of years, the key is not valid anymore and you will proceed to generate a new key. So that's an option. So I, I can select um, no and I use, I want my key valid for, I don't know, three years. And it will tell me that my key will expire at the exact date and I say, yes, that's correct. Now it asks, for my name and surname. And this is important for identifying the key and for uh, making people know that this is my key. So that's Gian Maria Ricci. This is my name. And I need to give an email. 
This is done for identifying the key because uh, GPG keys is used for exchange secure communication. So I will probably publish the public part of my key somewhere and people will go and will say that this is the key of Gian Maria Ricci and it will be associated to that email address. I proceed, I can put a comment. This is my demo key. And uh, that's the summary. I, you selected this user ID, so you have your name and your comment and your email. And I say, um, okay, that's, oh, that's okay. Now it asked me for the administration pin. Please be sure you type the correct pin. You have the user pin and you have the administration pin. And the administration pin is asked for every time you're doing administration operation, like creation of a new key. So I'm typing my admin pin and okay. So it will ask to protect the key with a password and the password it's needed for re-export the key. Remember you can re-export the key, but the key it's stored inside your physical key. The key you are exporting, it's called a shim key. It's only used, it's, it's a part of the private key and it's only used to identify that special, that specific YubiKey you used and the specific YubiKey that contains the real private card. The, the private certificate, the private key is not exportable. If you lose the key, if you lose your physical key, you will lose, you will lose your GPG key and you need to generate another one and you need to communicate everyone that you are not able to decrypt anymore with the key. Okay, the key is created and it told me the backup of the key is in this file, it's in my profile. This is the new privacy guard directory and you have the tool created new revocate certificate in this file and it told me that the key public key and the secret key were created and signed. So you are ready to use your keys. Please verify in Cleopatra that you press the certificate section, you will have the key in your system. This means that the shim private key is present on this system. But remember, uh, you will absolutely need your GPG, your physical um, card, because you need the GPG private key that is stored inside your physical card. And that's complete the, the demo. You now have a working key. And this concludes this first video about GPG and YubiKey. You was able to uh, configure the key, configure the admin and user pin and generate a valid cryptographic uh, key for signing and encrypt the crypt with GPG slash PGP. See you in the next video.